And of all the examples, I would say that this one is a favorite of the examples. And I'll show you why. So first of all, we do our same steps. The bottom is a difference of squares, so I can factor x plus 3, x minus 3. I can list my non-permissible values that x can't equal negative 3 and x can't equal 3. And I notice that I have the same factor on the top and the bottom. So those x plus 3s are going to cancel. This means I'm going to get a simplified equation. So I'm going to change, right, we have this special note, I'm going to change to green. Get those x plus 3 cancel. Okay? Number one mistake is students just write x minus 3. But we have to be careful that x minus 3 is still in your denominator. When you cancel something out, you are simplifying it to be 1 over 1. There would still be a 1 in your numerator. So this isn't a straight line. It is still a rational function. Okay? One of our non-permissible values went away. One did not. So if a non-permissible value, like when x is 3, that one didn't go away, you're still going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. But the other one that went away is going to give you a hole at minus 3. And we have to find the y-coordinate of the hole. And we find the y-coordinate using our new, here's our simplified equation in the green box. I plug my minus 3 into that. And I'm going to get negative 1 sixth. So I write that in, I wrote that in green so we could realize that we're getting that. Now moving forward, we still have a rational function, so we still have to do steps 3, 4, and 5, but now we use the simplified equation for the rest of our equation. We're going to graph the green graph. It has a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, and we're going to have to add a whole. Can you see that Your degree is still bigger in your denominator. That's the easiest one to figure out your horizontal asymptote. You have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Whenever your degree is bigger in your denominator, that's group 3, your horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. At this point, I would start graphing. I would have I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And I can already draw my hole. And negative 3, negative 1, 6 on my graph. Y-intercept is easy. Plug in 0 for x. Go to your new green equation. Maybe I'll write. When I plug in 0 for x, I get 1 over negative 1 third. And I'll write that negative 1 third in green to remind you that we got it from our green equation. Even though if you would have plugged in 0 into the original equation, you would get the same thing. But this is where the important thing is is your x-intercept, when you plug in 0 for y, you have to plug it into that green equation. And look at that numerator. Is that ever equal to 0? No. There are no x-intercepts. So as far as graphing goes, I now can add 0, 1 over negative 3 to my graph. 
but I have no x-intercepts whatsoever. As far as my sections go, my asymptote splits this up into two sections. Check section one. Do I have points in section one? Absolutely. Your hole actually counts as a point in the section as well. Do we have enough to graph section one? Have to go towards the as asymptotes? Absolutely. We have nothing in section two. I'm going to have to plug something into section two. Again, when I plug something into section two, I'm going to plug in positive four. I'm going to check. If I plug in positive four into the green equation, I get four over one. And we'll quickly label this. Sounds like class is ending. There's no bells today. You'd have the point four comma one. The practice for this one is the question in constructing understanding. So do the one at the beginning of the construct the understanding. This is the most typical question that I see on the exam. 